Police in Washington are now investigating a suspicious package outside of a postal facility. The FBI's National Capital Response Squad is investigating a report of a suspicious package at a mail facility in northeastern D.C. We have some news breaking. We've gotten word of a suspicious package. Breaking news from here in New York City with the reports of a suspicious package and the evacuation of a bank. What we're learning from the New York City police is that there was a suspicious package call about an hour ago. We need not look any further than our backyard. There's another one in New York City. I know that uh, Alan Chernoff is, is getting more information on exactly what this, this letter contained, if it really was a letter bomb. Supposedly, he's reporting that they have x-rayed it and it had looked suspicious but we don't know any more than that it happens a lot um, all news media especially cable news channels stop and pay attention when some sort of suspicious package or suspicious suspicious device gets law enforcement attention in all of the instances that we just excerpted there whatever it was that caused the police activity and the traffic rerouting and thus the news coverage uh, turned out not to be an actual bomb but this week in Washington state, it was not a false alarm. It was a real bomb. The Associated Press quoting an unnamed law enforcement source today as saying the bomb discovered at a Martin Luther King Day parade in Spokane, Washington on Monday was remarkably sophisticated. Quote, they haven't seen anything like this in this country, the official said. This was the worst device and most intentional device I have ever seen. Here's what we have learned since our reporting on this Spokane incident yesterday. The FBI says it has received a number of fruitful leads from the information the Bureau released yesterday to the public, saying further that they had no foreshadowing or warning, no written communications explaining the bomb. Also, no one has claimed credit for the bomb. The FBI special agent in charge of the Spokane office telling the Spokesman Review newspaper, quote, definitely this falls into the category of a thwarted attack. Also saying, quote, it is clear there was a significant risk of death and injury for multiple people. Law enforcement is so far not saying how the device was constructed, but beyond describing it as a sophisticated device meant to be remotely detonated, the FBI are describing some apparently lethal expertise in the placement of the bomb. The bomb was placed on a metal bench with a brick wall behind it that would have directed shrapnel from the device toward Main Street in Spokane, where the MLK Day marchers were expected to pass. I still do not know why this is not a national story. This was not a theoretical bomb invented by law enforcement that some would-be terrorist thought was real but never posed an actual threat. This was not an intended bomb, poorly constructed, that would not have caused extensive damage. This was the real deal, and so far it has barely made a national ripple. Page A15 of the New York Times today, one wire service report. As the country is still consuming a ton of information about the Tucson shootings, this happened nine days after that. This happened on Monday. FBI agents have been careful to say they do not have a suspect. They say they're pursuing what they call fruitful leads. In terms of forensics, we know the device has been sent to the FBI's lab in Quantico, Virginia. But in terms of explaining this event and understanding its importance, we are left with not much to go on. First, there's how the people investigating this crime are characterizing it so far. Secondly, we, what we are guessing could conceivably be relevant local context here. I mean, first, what the FBI says about it is this, quote, clearly the confluence of the parade route, the timing, the fact that the device was likely placed on that route roughly an hour before the parade falls squarely within the realm of domestic terrorism. That's what the FBI says. What kind of domestic terrorism would target an MLK march? We do not know. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of would-be terrorist bombers? We are left to guess at what would count as relevant context. In terms of previous bombings that could be construed as domestic terrorism, Spokane, Washington, this city does have a recent history. In 1996, a white supremacist group went on what's described as a four-month crime spree in Spokane. It included bank robberies and bombing the offices of the local newspaper and of Planned Parenthood. Three men affiliated with this group, they called themselves Phineas Priests, uh, they were convicted of that string of attacks. During that same time period, a pipe bomb was detonated at Spokane City Hall. News events at the time described it as hurling three-inch nails more than a block away into a park. The two men you see, in, you see here were, were indicted for that bombing. It was part of a sprawling indictment in which prosecutors described what they said was a plot to overthrow the government and set up a whites-only nation in the Pacific Northwest. Ultimately, these two were convicted of a triple murder in Arkansas. It was all part of the same indictment. Last night, a current white supremacist group that is also hoping to set up the Pacific Northwest as an Aryan homeland, last night they linked on their website to our coverage of this new bombing attempt at Spokane's Martin 
Martin Luther King Day parade. They filed the link to our story under a section of their white supremacist website that they labeled activism. They put it right above a statement about what they called the Arizona Jew shooting, describing the Tucson shootings last weekend as the plugging of a Jew congresswoman and a federal judge. Right above that, they posted a link to our coverage that was just titled Bomb in Spokane. They just posted the link and no further comment. On one level, I continue to be surprised at the lack of national coverage of this story. On another level, I do not care. We will continue to update you on this story as more information becomes available no matter who else is covering it or isn't.